Yeah, thank you very much. I'm not uh, actually Jakob, he's sick, but uh, I'm here to stand in for him, but <laughs> that was a nice introduction. So um, yeah, I'm here to talk about running PHP applications on .NET Core. And I know some of you are thinking, what the hell is this guy doing here talking at a PHP conference about .NET using swear words like C Sharp and, and .NET and whatnot? And um, all I'm asking is just to keep an open mind, just to think about what this project has accomplished or what, what sort of things have been done here. And just keep an open mind, see if there's anything that you might find interesting. And if not, that's fine, of course. But maybe if, if there is something you find, we can uh, chat after this presentation. So the subtitle is Two Worlds Out and How to Integrate Them. So that's the goal of this project, really. We do this presentation at both .NET conferences and PHP conferences. And the reactions are mixed every single time. At, at each of those conferences, uh, the guys usually say, well, PHP is the superior language, or .NET is the superior platform. And really, the truth is, what we're trying to say, neither, neither of those is really true. There's no such thing as a better language or templating system, as Rasmus was just saying. It's really more about which language fits a certain use case better. And that's what this project is going to attempt to do. It, it tries to let you use whichever language is the more appropriate one for your particular use case. Another misconception is that .NET is a commercial and paid product, whereas PHP, uh, PHP is completely free. This is also no longer the case. So maybe in 2011, 12, that used to be the case, but um, in the bomber area. But now that Satya Nadella is uh, the CEO, Microsoft has done a bit of a turn. And I know, again, Microsoft might sound like a swear word to some of you. But the reality is that the company has been contributing pretty heavily into the open source ecosystem. And so now even .NET, to an extent, is open source, free, and cross-platform. Um, so they changed .NET. They made it modular. They put out a second version of .NET called .NET Core. So what is this um, Peach Pie project that I'm talking about? So as was said in the introduction, it's a second generation of this particular type of compiler and runtime. The first one was called Fallinger. And it was conceived in Prague here at the Charles University. And the whole reason, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure some of you are asking yourselves, but why? So the whole reason was really in the beginning, why not? It was a software development computer, um, uh, what was the, it was just a course, a part, part of a coursework, a software project. And the, the main reason was just to see if it's even possible to compile this dynamic language. When they saw it is, uh, they were thinking, well, maybe it wouldn't be such a uh, bad idea to try to launch real-world applications and see if we can't make it faster, right? Compiled code, um, especially with ahead of time and just-in-time compilation, should be running relatively fast. So that was the, the original goal. In 2015, Microsoft brought out a platform, an API for compilers called Roslyn. And that sort of prompted us to say, so rather than continuing in the support of Fallinger, we're going to try to rewrite the architecture of this compiler on top of Roslyn and um, do it completely from scratch. And this is how PeachPy began. So PeachPy is a complete re-implementation of the whole PHP language, every single function in PHP rewritten in C Sharp. Um, there are still maybe 15, 20% of functions that we haven't implemented yet. But in general, it's pretty compatible already with a vast array of, of the PHP functionality. It's a runtime and compiler. So the goal is to be fully compatible with the PHP language, unlike some other projects that have uh, attempted or succeeded with compiling the PHP language, like HHVM by Facebook, which has just announced that it's no longer going to be supporting PHP. We're planning to be always fully compatible with the PHP language so that any real-world application can be just taken without any modification and ran on .NET Core. Um, it also includes a middleware for ASP.NET and ASP.NET Core, so anything you compile with PeachPy can very easily be passed into the ASP.NET Core pipeline. And the Roslyn architecture gives us uh, an additional performance boost. It solves a lot of the dirty work that Fallinger wasn't able to solve on its own, and also um, because of Roslyn, we're able to compile both to the full .NET framework as well as .NET Core. And the big advantage of that one is that it's cross-platform. It runs on any operating system, any device, as I'm going to demonstrate in the very end. So uh, very simply, how it works. So obviously, the input is PHP. 
And the output, as, as some might think, is not C sharp. It's actually MSIL, which is Common Intermediate Language Bytecode. So it's parsed and analyzed and compiled into uh, machine code instructions. And it spits out one DLL file. So the entire source code of whatever PHP application you have is compiled down to a single DLL file, which is then deployed onto the server. Because we compile to IL and not, for example, uh, transpile to C Sharp, we are 100% bidirectionally interoperable with any .NET language. So whether it's C Sharp, F Sharp, Visual Basic, completely interoperable with all those languages. Thanks to Roslyn, we can target, like I said, .NET Core as well as the full .NET and ASP.NET Core as a web framework. And um, the fact that it runs on any operating system and any device gives us some pre pretty uh, interesting, previously unthought of possibilities. Like, for example, I could write a PHP app and run it on my smartwatch, or on a Tizen, or IoT software, or as I'm going to show you later, on my phone. So I can write games and apps in PHP now. So here's, here's that whole um, slide that I think some of you are wondering about. But why? Why on earth are we doing this? Why did we re-implement the entire PHP language in C Sharp? Um, the original idea was performance. This was, uh, as Rasmus was just explaining, in the PHP 3, maybe 5 days. Obviously, the, the, the performance of PHP was nowhere near where it's at today. Um, so the idea was, through JIT compilation, we can really increase the speed of PHP application uh, and also offer some uh, really serious benefits of multi-threading on the .NET uh, framework, which means that we could really increase the throughput on the servers. So as a, as a sort of business implication, this resulted in many customers spending a lot less on, back then it was servers, nowadays it would have been cloud, and they had a significantly lower amount of downtime if they ran, for example, for whatever reason, on a Windows server. So just to give you a quick comparison, our website uh, used to run, it's a, it's a regular WordPress website, and we run it on Azure on a very, very cheap instance that Microsoft gives us. Um, and we had crashes about two or three times a week where the site was just down for no reason at all. And nowadays, when we run it on PeachPy, we haven't had a single second of downtime since then with the same exact setup. The second reason is security. Security in a sense of, obviously, f for one, the compilation and the analysis reveals all the errors you can really possibly have in your, in your code ahead of launching it and executing it. And secondly, and this is a kind of interesting option, you can distribute your application sourcelessly. So you, you distribute the DLL file, you deploy that onto the server, and no source code is needed whatsoever. So that gives you, first and foremost, the option of selling or distributing your PHP applications without really even giving the source code. And secondly, that gives you the option of um, deploying a site and not having any of the source code on the actual server. So um, if you think back to a scandal called Panama Papers, where there was a bit of a leak with a Panamanian law firm that was using the revolution slider, or slider revolution plugin for WordPress, and they didn't catch one of the big vulnerabilities there, and some, somebody hacked into the database and extracted all the data, uh, which included some celebrity tax information, that wouldn't have happened, for example, had they used PeachPy, because none of the sources would have been online. And also, anything you upload into a form, for example, would have to be compiled as well, together with the main application. So that's an increased security benefit for them. But the main reason, really, and the, the reason why almost all of our clients and, and people that use it, use it on, a, on a daily basis for free um, is interoperability. So because we compile to the same exact bytecode that any .NET language compiles to, we can perfectly interoperate, which means you can have an application that's written half in PHP, half in C Sharp. You can call uh, C Sharp libraries from PHP and vice versa. And you can use existing code bases in their entirety. Like you can use WordPress integrated into whatever .NET module you have in your system in one line of code, as I'm going to show later on. So if a client, for example, of ours, for whatever reason, t uh, tries to migrate from their PHP environment to a .NET environment, they don't, don't have to do it all at once. They can piece out this migration into small pieces and migrate piece by piece without any downtime. Uh, as I said before, we are able to run PHP on any device and any operating system, which opens up some previously unthought of use cases, making a game with Unity, for example. 
an app on your phone or some IoT software, which was previously really not uh, thinkable. And there are some maintainability benefits as well. This might seem like a small one, but for example, if, if you're running on a pure version of WordPress where uh, an update comes out very frequently every, I don't know, month or so, two weeks or so, you're going to have to update that site to keep up to date with the security. And with our version of WordPress, this actually happens seamlessly on the background. So we do it on our end by upping the version of the NuGet, as I'm going to show you in a bit, which is kind of the .NET equivalent of the Composer packages. And we do it on our server, and the, the customers don't even notice that they updated to the latest version of WordPress. So it's pretty seamless, and stuff can be automated quite well. So uh, I've prepared a small demo. Unfortunately, it's on video because of the very last minute change that we had. But I'm going to try to walk through it as best as we can. And if there's anything you want to see at the end that has to be done live, we're going to switch computers to a Windows computer here, and we can show uh, basically anything that I'm showing in this video. So the first demonstration um, of how to work with PeachPy is I'm going to just make a very small sample PHP program. So while compilation, I understand, may seem like there's a ton of uh, configuration to do, really, in reality, it's just one project file, which is a standard file in .NET, in the .NET ecosystem. And here we have a sort of very simple template for a console application that we just ran. And there's a very simple command in, uh, in .NET, which is just called .NET new. So to show you this uh, simple application, here it is, the, the hardest code you've ever seen. In order to start this process, we can either piece it out and say .NET run. So as you can see now, it'll take a little while because it's downloading the entire compiler, all the dependencies, and it has to, of course, restore the NuGet packages I'm going to show you in a second, and then compile and launch the, pro uh, the program. There it is. PHP tests says hello.NET world. We can also piece this out into the individual components. So .NET restore, re restores all the dependencies, downloads all of the NuGet packages. Then we would call .NET run. And it's the same result. So in order to show you that I'm not really making stuff up, let's open this in a tool called ILSpy, which is a a uh, tool that allows you to take a look at the bytecode as well as decompile it to C Sharp. So let's open this resulting DLL file that was achieved through compiling that simple PHP script. And we can see here the result of it um, in C Sharp, decompiled from uh, common intermediate language bytecode. And here I'm putting the two codes side by side. This is what it looks like. Now, I, I just want to point out that the tool isn't meant to generate C Sharp from PHP, but it's just a tool. ILSpy is just a tool that allows you to take a peek at what the outcome is, what has been achieved when you compile PHP. So this is how we work with the compiler, of course, when we try to make sure that it does the same thing that PHP used to do, because sometimes there are incompatibilities or inconsistencies, and we need to make sure they both output the same thing. Let's do the same thing in a more comfortable environment. This is Visual Studio Code, which is Microsoft's lightweight editor, um, which was uh, based on Atom. And we're going to open that same PHP program that we just saw. And here's that project file that I was talking about earlier, which basically works with any Microsoft environment. And I've just changed the version of PeachPy from 0.9.10 to 11. And this is how easy it is to sort of update the version that we're using here. I just, uh, I just wrote 11 and typed .NET restore to download all the dependencies. And so from now on, we're going to use the latest version of PeachPy to compile our PHP script here. We are including all PHP files. Here's where you can exclude whatever you want. You can, this is the project file that basically sets up your entire work. And we've just compiled it yet again using, as you can see, PeachPy 0.9.11. Um, this, this is a pretty cool lightweight editor. It has basic support for PHP. It does syntax highlighting. And we have an extension for it, which does some diagnostics, underlining, as you're going to see in a little bit. So what happens here, for example, when we make a mistake? So for example, what we can do is we can try to call this .NET, 
which is a class that we haven't defined yet in PeachPy because all of the interoperability happens implicitly, of course. And so our diagnostics here will warn you that this class hasn't been found yet. So that's one, one piece of diagnostics that we do within, with this extension. Now let's try to uh, do something else that the compiler doesn't like, which is, for example, to put this yield in a try block here. So that doesn't work. Yielding from a, from a try block doesn't work. It's an exception. And the same goes if we try a function. So let's, let's see what happens when we try to write a function here, a socket function. Unfortunately, PeachPy doesn't know that yet. Very easy for us to implement, but we just haven't we haven't seen a project or a client hasn't come with a project that needed sockets so far, so we had no reason to implement it so far, but it's very easy. But this is what will happen when you have a PHP application and the compiler doesn't know how to handle certain functions yet. The diagnostics will warn you automatically. So let's try to do some simple debugging here, put two breakpoints in there, and let's move on to debugging. This is where we have to do the only sort of piece of configuration that uh, VS Code requires us to do. So we have to configure our task yet, and that takes me a little while here. Yeah. This is our build and our task uh, launch. Here's where we put the Netcore App 2.0 as a target framework. And here's where we have to put the right name for our DLL file, which is called phptest.dll. And now we can start debugging. So eventually I'll get to the terminal. There I am. So we're using PeachPy 0.9.11. We've successfully compiled the entire project and now the breakpoint has caught on. You can see the locals window there. Um, it's a pretty basic uh, support for debugging. I'm just opening up the task manager here to show really that there's no PHP running whatsoever. It's really just one project, uh, one process called .NET. There it is. No PHP whatsoever. And the, the debugging is pretty accurate in, in Visual Studio code, but especially as you're going to see in a minute in Visual Studio where you can step and really hit individual symbols even. It, it knows how to do lines as well as columns. So this is how we work with PHP projects that are running on PeachPy compiled to .NET. Very simple example of a console application. So I want to close this now and show you a simple web application as well. So we have a template for simple web apps as well. Let's write that command here. OK. So in Visual Studio Code, we would open this simple project. And notice that there are now two files. There's a website and a server. So the server is the lightweight Kistrel web server. And of course, our website is our website. And it has a traditional Microsoft project file in there. And what we're going to try to do is just to uh, display the PHP info. So I'm just struggling with some of these notifications here. Restoring the dependencies again. And so here is our compiled, <laughs> just waiting for me to catch up on this video here. Yeah, so here's the project file. And again, it's using an older version of PeachPy, which I'm going to get in a second, and I'm going to update it. You see what's included. You see the target framework. Very simple configuration file for .NET. And here I notice that we're using a, an older version of our ASP.NET Core middleware. So I'm just updating that now. There it is. And eventually I will realize that 10 is not the newest one, but I'll get there in a second.
So here, here's our Castrol web, web server. This is a simple configuration for the server. It's a pretty good uh, server that offers a decent amount of throughput. If you look at the Tech Empower benchmarks, for example, Castrol, uh, the Castrol ranks very highly on that particular benchmark. And here's where we pass our entire website to, um, to the ASP.NET Core middleware. So this one line. And that works with both this tiny script here as well as an entire application like WordPress. And I will show that in, in the next demo, I guess, or after this one. So hitting .NET build. And this is where I realize, oops, we're using an old version of PeachPy. <laughs> so I go back and fix that to 11. And also here. And again, restore the dependencies. And now we're good. We're using the latest version of PeachPy. So this is kind of how you work in, in the .NET world with dependencies and NuGet packages. You just up the version, and everything is downloaded and, and installed automatically as well as updates. And this is, by the way, how we do updates in WordPress as well when we update it, um, just through upping the version of a NuGet package that we pass on to our server. So we've successfully compiled this tiny little PHP website. We have the server and the website. And so all that's left to do now is just to open it in a browser. Once it's compiled, it's So putting a breakpoint there. And we can launch it. Takes a couple seconds to compile every single time. Larger applications might take 10 seconds. This one took, let's say, three. And yeah, we have. Listening, listening on port 5004 on our local host. So um, once I open this in my browser, I can very simply display that PHP info that we were talking about earlier. Here you're going to see the breakpoint catching on. And Let's step over that one, and there it is. Slightly altered for our colors and our logo, but it's the classic PHP info site. So let's uh, stop this application here. This was a nice start. This was sort of to ease into the topic and the, the whole presentation, but now let's try to open a bigger editor. So obviously, VS Code is lightweight. It's Microsoft's version of Atom, let's say. But Visual Studio is really the powerhouse of where Microsoft projects are being developed, or C-sharp projects in general. And Visual Studio has a lot more to offer than VS Code in terms of debugging and performance diagnostics and so on. So in order to sort of demonstrate that, let me open the same website again. And there's one thing that is displayed here that VS Code doesn't display, which is dependencies. And these are sort of references to .NET libraries, very similar to the composer packages, where the first and implicit dependency is on our PeachPyte app, and then some other dependencies on, as you can see here, for example, the basically any .NET library that you can think of, you can make a dependency to it, and will automatically be included in your application. So it's the same project file that we were using earlier in VS Code. It works in VS as well. It works in any Microsoft environment. It's just one configuration file. And so when I get to it here, I'm trying to launch it, but I will get an error. So first and foremost, um, I realized I I'm launching the DLL, but I'm not launching the server. So. I had to fix that first. And now you can see I can use either the server that we are um, distributing this with, or you can use IIS Express. So it's already built in here. And and we're listening on the same port. 
and the breakpoint catches on. So here you can see we have a call stack, which with a bigger application in a minute, we're going to see a lot more information there. You have the locals window. We can disable the just my code uh, option here, which allows you to also uh, debug extensions that you are adding to your applications as well. And here you can see the, the whole output window, which is loaded with logs and other information. And um, the cool part here, in my opinion, is the top right, the diagnostic tools, which show you really all kinds of information about your memory usage, your CPU, the CPU load. You can take snapshots of memory usage. I'm going to do that in a minute. Zoom into, it's kind of similar to what Rasmus was showing with the fire graph earlier. But you have a lot of uh, information that Visual Studio can give you about your PHP app. And of course, the debugging process here is all integrated within that one development environment. So it's very comfortable use. And I'm not paid by Microsoft at all to say this, by the way. I'm really not, truly. <laughs> yeah, so here you can see you, you have information about garbage collection, process uh, memory. And what we're going to do later on in a bigger example is take a snapshot and zoom in, see how much time each function is eating up. Um, Visual Studio also gives you uh, information about how long it took for each line to ex uh, execute. So lots of information. So I'm just sort of going through the options here. Here you can see the dependencies again. And what we're going to do now is add a new project, and we're going to show some interoperability. So we're going to create a small C-sharp project. And I want to add a dependency to the C-sharp project to our PHP app. And we're just going to write a very simple class here with just one parameter. And it's going to get a .NET string object. Super simple, very, very quick script. And I'm going to make a rather costly mistake here in a little bit, which you're going to see. So, so far, so good. I'm pretty happy with this code. But in a little bit, I'm going to make a mistake. There it is. <laughs> it's going to turn out to be rather unfortunate later on. And I didn't notice it. <laughs> and now we're just adding a dependency to that c -sharp project to our PHP application. So what we're doing now is essentially combining PHP and c -sharp within one project. And we are going to put them side by side in a little bit. There it is. And let's write something else in PHP. We're going to make them interoperate, to my dismay, in a little bit. And this is why we don't need the uh, .NET PHP extension, because well, all the interoperability is done implicitly like this. We don't need to, we don't need to have a sp specific extension for PHP to do that. So I'm going to, in a little bit, when I'm done writing here, maybe I should have sped that up, but when I'm done writing here, I'm going to add breakpoints in both C Sharp and PHP. So breakpoint, and another one, and launch it. OK, looks like we're good to go. And here's our first breakpoint catching on. In Visual Studio, debugging is even more powerful than in Visual Studio code. Um, it's very, very accurate to individual symbols, columns, lines. Gives you a lot of information. And here on the call stack, you can see that it sort of switches randomly between PHP and C Sharp. There's really no overhead. There's nothing in the middle there that 
that says switch from PHP to C Sharp. It just goes straight from PHP to .NET. And you can see how the PHP string got into uh, our C Sharp string implicitly. So all this happens very seamlessly without marshalling. I never had to install PHP, actually. Never had to do any sort of installations. Everything happens from within this development environment by just restoring dependencies, setting versions, and so on. It's, it's quite stable and clean uh, for us. And yeah, that's, uh, well, a little bit unfortunate. So uh, what I want to do next is I want to take a look at a small sample where I'll be using the .NET class datetime, which reminds me of Rasmus' uh, speech earlier on when he was uh, speaking about pasting the date. So uh, again, when, when I use this class, and I'm going to get to it, so I can use the, the .NET class datetime very simply. I can basically write whatever I want in here in .NET, and it's going to paste it at that very spot. So it doesn't really matter to the computer that it's actually a PHP project, as you can see the tag up there in PHP. I'm using .NET in there, and I don't really care. So once I fix all the typos here, just using a standard .NET datetime function within a PHP code, And the development environment handles this. PeachPy handles this. And when I want to open this compiled application again and take a look at it in uh, tools such as ILSpy, which I'm going to do now, you can see that a C -sharp method is really called directly with absolutely no overhead. So um, this is how the interoperability works between PHP and C -sharp within one project. There it is. So before I move on to a much larger project, um, I w one of the opportunities that this gives you as PHP developers is that if you were to, for whatever reason, want to distribute in your application without the source code, this would be a pretty good way. You just give whoever needs to have that application this DLL file or multiple DLL files. and they never get the source code. They never see your source code. They can't distribute it. They can't steal it. Uh, it's, it's a pretty good option for people that want to sell plugins, for example. And there we are. We, we wrote out the daytime. So the next application that I'm going to run here is the, f the first real-world application that we were able to launch on PeachPy. And not very surprisingly, it's WordPress. So. Um, obviously, given that it powers, according to WordPress, over a quarter of the entire internet, we wanted to go for the biggest one right away that's going to reach the biggest amount of, uh, or the, the biggest possible audience. So the day that we published that WordPress can run on .NET, somebody posted it on Hacker News, and it somehow went viral, and we had about 25,000 visitors to our website that day. And unfortunately, uh, our old website wasn't able to handle it, so we had a few crashes there. And I'd be curious to see what happens if we were to do it again now on PeachPy. But unfortunately, we haven't had that big of a traffic since then. So here's my NuGet package that I've made out of this small web application. And it doesn't contain the source code. So you can give this to someone, and they will not know the source code of your original application. OK, so next up. Let's open a rather big project in WordPress. So what we've done is we just pulled the latest version of WordPress off of their repository. So we've made no modifications to the source code whatsoever, took it as it is. Um, in the beginning, when we first compiled WordPress, we had to make a couple of modifications. Nowadays, PeachPy can handle WordPress. And almost any plugin that we've encountered so far can also be ran together with this. So. We have a few you know, extra components in here for us, but in general, um, the WordPress source code is in there. And I'm going to point to it in a second just to show it. So there are some 
So there's some middleware around it that serves to basically for PeachPy purposes. And here we are with all the original source code of WordPress unmodified. We can also include, as I'm going to show in a second, all the images and scripts right away with the compilation. So what we did here is we took some older version of our blog on our website and just, just compiled it together with the application. So uh, when I point to it in a second, it's going to say include, and then it's going to include some, yeah, we have a basic theme here, the classic 2017 theme. And here's our project file using the latest version of PeachPy this time, and this is where we uh, include all of our content as well. Some, some older version of our blog together with the pictures and all the scripts. And the cool part is we're also compiling PHP docs. So any, any type annotations are compiled together with the application, which makes the compiler a lot smarter. So if you tell it, if, if you put a type annotation in there, the compiler will obviously be able to be much smarter about which type is supposed to be in that particular spot. So any type annotations are always really, really good for the compiler. So we've just launched it. We put a breakpoint in there. And during the first time executing, because of the .NET JIT compiler, it usually takes a little bit longer. We haven't worked on optimizing the compile time or runtime yet, but we, through some small tricks, we already got from, I think, about 22 seconds down to, I don't know, seven, eight seconds of comp compiling the entire code of WordPress. So that's, that's already f fairly successful. And here it is, all the, all the WordPress code in IL Spy again. This is what it looks like decompiled into C sharp. Yep, here are the PHP docs. Yeah, just showing a little bit of what it looks like here. And again, like last time, there's just one line that passes the entire application to the ASP.NET Core pipeline, and that line is app use WordPress. So that takes the entire source code of WordPress. It works, obviously, with any other application as well, but it takes the entire source code of WordPress and passes it on to our ASP.NET Core pipeline. And now you can see uh, all the diagnostic information as memory is being taken up and CPU is being used. And it looks like we're listening on the same port as before. And so now I'm going to make the traditional mistake of going for it and not realizing that I don't have a database up and running. So in a second here, I'm going to get the super telling WordPress error, unable to connect a database, which happens to us a decent amount. So I'm not realizing it at this point, but I am seeing in the on the bottom right side in the in the output window, I'm already seeing a warning or error there that the database isn't being connected. So if I paid attention, there it is, the warning. And so I know that at this point I'm screwed and it's not going to work. But I'm just showing some CPU usage here as as the site is loading, and there's my error. So I, I do have to start Docker and just start a very simple instance of a MySQL database. Maybe going to speed it up just a little bit here. So I'm just, uh, maybe not that much. I was just trying to be thorough here by showing Visual Studio. And there we are. That's, that's WordPress running on .NET entirely. And uh, the cool part about this is that when we log in, we were able to, or it's, it's fairly simple to put our own widgets into the dashboard to alter whatever we want. So we have a small widget there, which I want to get to if I have the time, 
which is written in C-sharp, actually. It's a razor partial view. On, on the bottom there, you can see it with our logo, and it says something like, hello, we're running on .NET, something like that. So that's written in C-sharp. That's an extension or, or widget written in C-sharp in a razor partial view. So this is all of WordPress running on .NET Core. The main difference and the only difference right now is that you can't just uh, install a plugin from the dashboard like you used to um, because it has to be compiled as well. But we are uh, launching and we're currently beta testing just a service of WordPress running on .NET where the, the process of installing uh, plugins will be exactly the same. But what happens in the background is that a NuGet package is being installed on the server and it's being pasted into your application. So here I'm just getting to the diagnostics and I believe we can skip that in favor of some questions. So I'm just showing some detailed memory snapshots here that I'm taking, zooming into the individual functions. So this is how we work with uh, WordPress and you can really diagnose it. So I'm just skipping through it because we were a little bit late. The last thing that I want to show you before we move on is um, as I was saying earlier, PHP is not really used for web for uh, mobile applications, but because we can use Xamarin to compile PHP code and uh, thanks to PeachPy and run it on, let's say, my Android phone or his iPhone or your watch or a vacuum or whatever it is, we can start writing some stuff in PHP that would otherwise not be possible. I wish I could show you this here, but you can come around to my phone later on and sort of take a look, but I have a small application here which is just a 3D image of the world spinning, which we wrote in PHP, and the source code is publicly available. I can, I can share the repository later on. And thanks to uh, Xamarin, we were able to launch it on my Android phone, and it's easily possible to take that same code and launch it on an iPhone. So I think in favor of questions, I'm just gonna shorten this part of the presentation a little bit. But uh, if there are no questions, I'll just show the rest of the video and talk the rest of the way through. So yeah, for now, thank you very much, and I'm ready for your questions. And if they're very technical, he's going to answer the questions. Do you have any benchmarks of WordPress on C Sharp versus PHP uh, WordPress? Yeah, it's a good question. We do. Uh, we got are uh, torn apart for them when we posted them because we don't know that much about the PHP language, to be frank, but we just took WordPress as it is and ran it on PHP versus PeachPy. And of course, it turned out to be something like 25, 30% faster, but then people started yelling, but what about you know opcode caching and stuff like that, which wasn't turned on eventually. So when we turned on opcode cache, it was about the same. Um, so WordPress is currently about the same. This was, I think, on PHP 7.1, but to be fair towards us, we haven't done any performance optimizations yet. So right now we were focused on making sure every function runs on PeachPy as well. And once that's uh, accomplished, we're gonna start to really try to optimize. So I believe we have uh, a decent amount of percentage that we can still raise it. The ultimate goal is to be faster, of course. I have another question. You mentioned we can use anything from c -sharp world, meaning collections, synchronous processing, and all that stuff will it just work? Yes. I think you should include it in your presentation next time. It will be really cool. <laughs> Maybe for more specifics? Uh, like, I know, async or, I don't know, parallel collection processing? Well, if you wanted to use uh, async, uh, you would... Um, well, of course, there's no syntax to support in PHP for, for async, so you would uh, you, you can't use the language all the language constructs from C sharp. You can uh, use the you can use the libraries in .NET. But of course, if you use uh, something which is related to multi-threading, uh, you need to consider uh, the that they the, the that they can happen some uh, some college like uh, race conditions and stuff like that. So yeah, it's uh, it's kind of kind of uh, sometimes it can be more complicated if you want to use more advanced stuff. But in in, in general, uh, you can think uh, of PHP as another language to 
that can be compiled to uh, .NET. So. Uh -huh. I see. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, as far as I know, .NET applications are compiled to bytecode that is then uh, Jitted to machine code, right? Yeah. Uh, and as far as I know, .NET applications can be compiled to LLVM uh, bytecode, right? Uh, LLVM or I think. My point is, is yeah, I've, yeah. I've I've seen I've seen uh, C sharp uh, applications compiled to WebAssembly. So can we do the same thing with PHP and finally bring it to the browser? Okay, so can you repeat it, please? The, can, we, can we compile a PHP application uh, with, with your compiler to LLVM code so we can compile it to WebAssembly? Well, <laughs> yeah, actually, if there, uh, when there is a compiler from, from IL to WebAssembly, then it, <laughs> it should be possible. But it's, uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure whether is it uh, re like re ready or <laughs> already. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but uh, I think that eventually it's possible, and, and, and I think that you can that you can do with uh, with the .NET assembly. Uh, can then you do it uh, uh, with PHP, which PHP if you compile it <laughs> with, with PHP to that. So yeah, well we haven't tested it, but in theory, theoretically, yeah, yeah. theoretically <laughs> okay. it could work. Okay, cool. Okay, thank you. Hey, um, I'm wondering how do you deal with typing in PHP 7? Uh, is it basically do you just ignore it in the code or do you add like an opcode to check the type? Well, we have a sophisticated type analysis. For example, we can, uh, some, sometimes we can even say that this branch won't, won't uh, execute because the type is, doesn't match the, the condition in it. So uh, the, I think there's an article on our web page about that. Mm. So or we can we can talk about it after this talk because I think we are <laughs> running out of time. Yeah, yeah, but sure. it's, we think a lot of if we can if we can do it, if we can analyze anything during the compile time we do it. Otherwise we defer it to the runtime. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Okay, thank you. Thank you.